as Pastor Light said, is based on the book of Matthew chapter 21, verse 13. The Bible reads, it is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. This is from the new, this is from the King James Version. And then I also checked with the New Living Translation. It reads as follows. He said to them, the scripture declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but we have turned it into a den of thieves. This struck me strongly because today we are actually praying for the church, which is the only hope of God on the face of the earth. The church is a global entity for whom Christ died. And it, is, it has spread throughout the world. And it is the very vehicle God would want to use in order to reach the ends of the earth. But when we look at the book of Matthew, we see a very different picture there. That Jesus is saying something that would definitely alarm this herself by saying my my house of prayer Hello, Sister Ayanda. We're struggling to get flow with your communication. Hello. Maladuse Temazi and Trish. Zunto Mekata. Hello, can you, can you people hear her? Is it from my side? We can hear. Hello. We are also, I'm not hearing too. Thank you, Jesus. But is she still there? Is she is she in the participants list? Somebody confirm no. for me, please. Is she no, still no, there? No, she's not. Okay. Can we ask uh, Pastor David to continue, please? Maybe when she comes back, she will need to reset her system and continue from there. Is it okay? No, it's fine, sir. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you so much. All right, we want to appreciate God. We give him all the praise. Thank you, uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Light, for the opportunity to be part of this wonderful revival exercise. Um, one of the things I want to quickly say with respect to the prayer for this month, um, I'm not sure, maybe we have thought about that. Uh, is the fact that uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2 says, Revive mm. us, revive thy work in the midst of the years. Mm. I read it, he said, Oh Lord, I have heard that speech. I was afraid, Oh Lord, revive thy work. In the midst of the years, in the midst of the years, make known in rot, remember mercy. mercy. In other words, uh, the midst of the years, according to Bible perspective, it's a period of revival. It's a, it's a season of revival. And that's one mm -hmm. of the main things I want us as we continue, even in these 24 hours, uh, this month and next month, God, I believe God is going to do uh, something beyond our imaginations in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are praying for the church. 
I want us quickly to look at Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to quickly read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. <coughs> I will read verse 25 to 27. Ephesians 5, verse 25. Now the word of God says, he said, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he should be holy and without blaming. Blame. Now, to a very large extent, we can see uh, eventually all over the world, the glory of the church is almost opposite of what we are seeing in this scripture. Jesus said, a glorious church, a church that is not having any spot or wrinkle mm. a church that is without blemish mm. holy and without blemish that's what the scripture says and mm. so we see that this is one of the reasons why these prayers are very significant because so many things have gone wrong in the church and we thank God because God has promised, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes. So in any case, whatever that is going on, we thank God because the purpose of God will stand forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this month, uh, this hour, I want us we are going to, first of all, to thank God because he's the owner of the church. No man owns the church. In fact, that is actually one of the points I want us to begin to bring repentance for. We see many things. One of the reasons why the church is limited in its, in its outlook, in its power to be able to prevail, is because men have taken over the church unknowingly, and sometimes it is out of ignorance. And then you hear somebody, God uses someone to start a church, and then you see him stand at the altar, and he starts saying, my church, my church, my church. No one that we are seeing, only what God can do in the church. Sorry, only what man can do, not what God can do. What God can do is always different from what man can do. Because indirectly, many churches, men are indirectly claiming ownership of the church. And that is one of the genesis of the problem of the church because men do not understand that church actually belongs to God. God is the owner of the church. So we are going to begin from there to bring repentance. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, as your children, we can see, and one of the ways that many people have also, whether knowingly or knowingly done this, and then you see people, you, you see pastors and ministers, teachers will, will a, a, a signboard, a church is full of uh, the, 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 the man of God and ministers, picture and everything at the end of the day, a little is advertised of Jesus and more is advertised of the minister in charge. And the Holy Ghost is pushed to the corner. And so what do we see? All one man can do is what people see in the church, not what God can do. We are going to pray and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bring repentance, O God, for everywhere, Lord God, as your people, as a church, where we have indirectly pushed you to the corner, pushed the Holy Ghost to the corner, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Father, in your, 
in this season of revival, remember your mercy. Let's open our mouth and let us begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, this hour, we want to glorify you. We want to exalt you. We want to so that by the time you are just to return, we will be ready in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 You see, you see, wisdom demands, and this is the safest thing in the house of God. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Mm. That is the main publicity. Mm. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Mm. Jesus, God said, I do not come to you with mm. men's wisdom. I didn't come to come and tell you how eloquent I am. I didn't come and tell you how many degrees that I have. I didn't come and tell you. He said, all oh, that I come to you to tell you is Jesus and him crucified. But what do we see in the church today? And in fact, John was one of those who understand this spiritual principle. John said that I might decrease, but he must increase. I want to decrease, let him increase. And so what do we see? We indirectly with our actions as those that God has put in charge, we indirectly, we push the Holy Ghost to the corner. And you know the Holy Ghost is a very, it's a very good gentleman. He said, "My spirit will not, my spirit will not strive with any man." He's a good gentleman, and then he will just go and stay at the corner and be watching you. He'll be watching you. He'll be watching the people, watching us, and all that we see is what man can do. Oh God, in that, and in fact, I'm not sure why this is so impressive in my spirit. That this is one of the genesis oh. of the delay in the church of Jesus, where the Holy Ghost is not allowed to take full charge, where the Holy Ghost is not allowed to be in total control, who one way oh. or the other. At the end of the day, man is what is being advertised. Man and oh. the power of man is a limited thing. It's a limited thing. And what do we see? The devil seems like he's prevailing. Father, in the name of Jesus, even on this platform, Father, we come before you to restore your presence in your church. Mm. We, we come before you, Father, to restore your glory back to the center of activity, back to the center, oh Lord, of the center of your church. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh God, revive your works, revive your works in the church, Baba, revive your works in the church, revive your works in the church, let the church, oh God, be set on fire again, let the church be set on fire for you, oh God, let the church be set on fire for you, oh God. Mando Zeta, Mando Zeta, he gave him a catusia, Limbrina Garabaniendo Boko to send the Gaban de Soto Boko to Gidi 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 Gidi, Limban de Caputu Mabandu Setra, Limbrina Gadusetana Gadus and the Patas Yadia, Lindo Sodono, Sugidi Gada. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Now, and then from that genesis, that foundation, because the word of God has told us that he said, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Once the Holy Ghost is pushed out of the center, while the Holy Ghost is pushed out of the center, then, then we we'll see all that is left is the strength of man. And the strength of man is usually weaker to be able to stand against the strength of powers of darkness. And so what do we see? The next thing, we start seeing all kinds of things. Like the scripture that was read by our sister Yanda in, uh, in Matthew 21. We, 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 verse 13, we saw in that scripture, Jesus entered the church one time and started beating people out of the church. Why? Because when the Holy Ghost leaves, all that you will see is that all kinds of evil activities in the church. And one of them is corruption and manipulation. Corruption. What is corruption? Dishonesty. Dishonesty at the highest order. Dishonesty even sometimes. Why? A minister is preaching and saying what never happened. Dishonesty, dishonesty, everyone running up again, everyone wants to, wants to swindle another and all. Corruption and manipulation in the church. And so this hour, I want us to begin to cry to the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are going to cry to God to have mercy. In the name of Jesus, the way we have made the house of God a place of corruption. Hallelujah. Have mercy, Father. Can we please open our mic now? Let's begin oh, to Jesus. cry to him. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come before you, Father, and we cry for mercy. We cry for grace. We are praying, Father, Lord God, in your wrath, remember mercy. But in the midst of your children, Father, where your house has been turned into a den of thieves, oh God, where you are seeking to cleanse the house, Father, we are praying against corruption, we are praying against manipulation, Father, we are praying against false doctrines and false prophets, and we say it, Daddy. Have mercy upon us, O Jehovah. Have mercy upon us, O Father. Cleanse and purify us, your church, with the precious blood of the spotless Lamb of God in Jesus' name. Merciful Jesus. Oh, shut it. Prodeba, shut it. Lenda Rebosca. Rianta, Lada Bayaka, Shalabanda Rebosca. Reteke, Lenda Rebosca, Lenda Rebosca. Father, cleansing, 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 cleansing. Lord God of your church in Jesus' name. Oh God. Amen. 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 Now, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. I, I, I want us to quickly look at what the scriptures say in that place. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three. Chapter four, verse three. Now it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their loss, shall they heap to themselves teachers having eating ears. In other words, Jesus. Uh, true, the Apostle Paul was saying, he said the time will come when what we shall be seeing parading all over town and all over the church is false doctrine. Doctrine words that are meant to just motivate people, to excite the emotions of people, words that cannot reach the soul to fall down in repentance. Any gospel that does not cause a man to turn away from sin, it's a false doctrine. And so, mm. what do we see? Paul was saying, he said, the time will come when men shall no longer endure sound doctrine. The doctrine that will tell you to go back to your husband if you are divorcing. Go back to your wife 
if you are divorcing, the gospel that will tell you to stay away from what God hates and stay close to what God loves. The gospel that will touch the heart, the gospel that is meant to change the world. There was a time when, when people want to marry, we see unbelievers sometimes, they will go and, and they will start looking for a church, a church sister. They will start looking for a church, a church, a church sister. They say that church people, they are godly. But what do we see today? Because of false doctrine, people that are produced in the church, it's just like some universities today, there are, uh, there are industries who have a kind of tax on university. They say any student from the university, we don't want him. We don't want him. And that's what the church has gradually become. So, one doctrine, we are also going to pray as we begin to bring repentance on behalf of we, the church people, ministers of the gospel, children of God, for allowing false doctrine to take over our pupils, to take over the church, to become the, the tool of darkness, to rule over the world, and to indirectly put the church under subjection. So we are going to begin to pray. Let's open our mic as we also begin to pray to God this hour. Have mercy, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That we pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that we pray for some of the Father before you and asking, Father, for the restoration of the pure doctrine of the word of the living God. Father, back to the church in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Lord God, we bring repentance to our God for exchanging, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, the true doctrine, Father, of Christ and Him crucified, Lord God, in exchange for Jesus all men faces that bring not in the heart of your people, O oh God. We are asking, Father, that you let Jesus upon us, O God, God, into corrupting your way. And we ask you, Father, that Lord God, your fire will begin to restore for God, for some of Father, the very essence of your being back to the church in Jesus' name. In, in the name Jesus of Jesus. precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, along with that prayer, we are also going to pray for false, pro for false prophets because false doctrine are actually in line or in conjunction with false prophets. Jesus said it. He said they will arise in these last days. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth as we bring repentance for false prophets, we allowed it, we allowed it in our churches. We allowed it. We are also going to pray that the Lord God will have mercy upon us as a church and by his spirit, may God begin to filter false prophets out of our pupils in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's open up our mic as we also make that prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, name of, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, that we come to you for you again. And we are praying, Father God, that even as the word declares, Father, that you separate us sheep from the goats, Lord God, and sheep from sheep, Lord Jesus. We ask you in Jesus' name that, Lord God, not only will you expose the life is of the enemy to false prophets, Father, that there will be a clear separation to come on Amanda or the Father of those that bring, oh God, those in the church, Father God, corrupting Father God, the body of Jesus Christ to come on God in Jesus' wonderful name. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you intervene with your power, with your might, with your strength, Lord God, and bring truth, Lord God, undiluted truth. Lord God of your word, Father, even back to the body in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, precious name. Amen. 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 Now, I'm not sure if our sister Ayanda is back on the line now. I am back. Oh, you are around now. Okay, I'll just take this last prayer point, mm -hmm. and then, and then I will hand over to you. 
Now, I want us to look at also the issue of lack of understanding of the kingdom of God. Lack of, in fact, this again is another major problem that today is giving rise to the downfall of the spirit and the power of God in the church. Lack of understanding of the kingdom of God. And, and, uh, and, and as such, what do we see? We see today because many people are, 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 are because of their improper development for the work of God. Many who never knew the, the road of discipleship, they were no disciple. They didn't understand the, 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 the discipleship program in the kingdom of God. And so they go out there and they start saying what they do not know. And at the end of the day, what do we see? We see a church, a church of men and women who do not understand the principles of the kingdom of God. And ultimately, what, we, what do we see is a church that is sweet because it is the principles of the kingdom of God. That it, the, the, the church is to erupt the kingdom of God, is to erupt, it's an extension of the kingdom of God on earth. And so, when people who do not understand the principles of the kingdom of God now see the kingdom of God indirectly, like Jesus was saying, He said, You have become, you are not entering the kingdom of God, and you are not allowing those who want to enter to enter. So, we are going to take this prayer and to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as a church, we have failed you also in this area. Lord, for many of us, oh God, that Jesus are uh, representing you to uh, uh, in one way or the other, Lord, everywhere, Father, Lord, that we have, Lord, preached the kingdom of God without understanding, where we have rather created problems for the kingdom of God instead of advancing it. Jesus, we bring repentance. We ask today, oh Lord, that you have mercy upon us, that there might be healing upon us as a church. Let's open our mouth and let us pray that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we also come to you to confess our sins in the name of Jesus. Lord, as a church, as Lord, your servants, let me pray away, Father. And we have fed you instead of we, Father God, to stay in your, to stay before you in the wilderness, to learn from you, to let us understand it, of your kingdom, to take us out to let us understand it, of the very protocol of the God. Of the kingdom and not just uh, the mandate of his father on the face of the earth to come out and die, your father, for the lack of understanding, oh God, of your mandate, father, for the church, we have done so many things, father, God, we have even misrepresented to come out and die, father, your kingdom, Lord God, to those that seek to follow you, we come in repentance, father, before you to say, Jehovah God, have mercy upon us. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, Jesus. Wash us clean, O God. Have mercy, Holy Spirit. Make us whole and holy before your Father. Remake us, Jesus. Hold us back to the rock from which we were hewn. In the name of Every attribute of God. Have mercy, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I will hand over now to our sister to. Take over, Sister Ayanda. Jesus, thank you, Father. Sister Ayanda. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother David. Thank you so much, Tata, for that. I'm just going to be taking over. It's the same prayer points that have been prayed for already. I will just share what is in my heart as we begin to pray one point after another. It was laid strongly in my heart, the book of Matthew chapter 21. In fact, I would be reading it from verse one to 13, but for the sake of time, I'll be focusing on verse 13. It's, the title is at the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Here the Bible speaks of Jesus responding to what he sees in the temple just after entering Jerusalem. Initially, when he entered in there, everybody is happy for him. 
they are laying down their, their, their clothes. They are laying down the palm trees and everybody is crying Hosanna in the highest. And then the first thing that it does before even touching base with every other person in the city is to go to the temple. When he finds, when he goes to the temple, he finds something very strange and something very alarming. There he finds that what was supposed to be a significance of a people ready for him is the opposite of that. And then he says in, in Matthew chapter 21, verse 13, it is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. In another version, it says, but you have turned into, into a den of thieves. And then as we continue, the Bible says he turned the tables upside down and then he was, he rebuked them sharply. Just following that exercise, we see again something strange. Where after Jesus has just done the cleansing of the temple, the Bible says the lame and the blind from that moment came to him and they were healed. It is quite evident that from what we are seeing, there has been such a corruption in the house of God, in the church, in the very heartbeat of the Father concerning the world that has caused what would have been a food or food for the people to be absent because something else had exchanged the Lordship of Christ. And what is really, really clear is that whenever the Lordship of Christ has been exchanged, idolatry is very inevitable and it tends to express itself in these ways, in corruption, in manipulation, in false doctrine and in false prophets. As, as our brother David has already alluded. I will also look at another scripture in the book of Jeremiah chapter eight. It's in line with Jesus removing or cleansing the temple in order to allow his spirit to begin to touch the lame and the blind so that they may receive what he came here for. For the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me to, to heal the sick, to open the blind eyes, to make the lame walk, to proclaim the year of God's favor unto his people, and to preach the gospel of good news. Unless there was cleansing in the temple, unless there was clearing of anything that exchanged the lordship of Christ, nothing of what you are expecting God and we are trusting God to do, it, even in the last days, which we are expecting as a revival, would happen. Now, looking at the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse, verses 11, the Bible says there, verses 11, in paraphrase, because I can't find this, in paraphrase, it says, why are you, why is the, is the wound of the daughter of my people? not healing, where there is no peace, you proclaim peace, peace. Another version says, why are you taking lightly the wound of the daughter of my people? God is not speaking to people who do not know him here. He is speaking to his own children. He says, when they come to me, and you, are, you as the church are supposed to represent me to them. You take their wound so lightly and their wound is not healing at all. And instead of bringing me as the healer of the wound, you proclaim peace, peace, when in actual sense there is no peace. And then in verse 22, fast forward, he says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no healing for the wound of my people? So based on these two scriptures, where Jesus Christ is literally visiting the temple and finding something strange, and then he cleanses the temple, and shortly after that, people begin to receive the very benefits of him having come. Number two, where the Bible talks of the wound of his people not being healed, 
even though they are being promised peace, peace. And then he says, is there no balm in Gilead? We are actually going to be praying and bring repentance and con confession before the Father for exchanging the Lordship of Christ in the church and making it a place where corruption, where falsehood, where impurity, where false doctrine and even false prophets have come and become a voice against the voice of the Father and say, Lord, will you visit us again? Will you have mercy upon us again? Will you, as we allow you, to turn the tables so that the true reality of the essence of your presence will come in and the revival that our hearts are seeking for will now begin to bring the, 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 the evidence of healing of the lame and the blind and many who are wounded in the church. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that we are bringing repentance before you, O Holy God, because we acknowledge before you, O Father, that Lord God, we've made your house, we've made your temple, we've made, Lord God, the place that you separated for yourself, a place where, Father, we are doing our own activities, a place where, Father God, we are doing our own will. Well, we have exchanged, Father, your Lordship, O God, God, and in the process have chased the Holy Spirit away our in our midst, O Jehovah God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we pray, Jehovah, that Father, you will enter anew, enter the temple again, cleanse us, O God, purify us, Father. Make us whole, make us holy. Remain by your mercy, O God, in your wrath, Father. Let your Holy Spirit visit us. Let your fire, Jehovah God, again revive the church. Let those that are broken, O God, let those that are wounded, Father, let those that are blind, let those that are lame, O Jehovah, find true healing because you are visiting us, O Father. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we are praying of God and we bring repentance, Lord God, for all the corruption that has taken place in the temple, O Father, for all falsehood, O God, for all false promises to your children, Father. And we say that have mercy upon us in Jesus' wonderful name. Heavenly Father, I pray, Jehovah God, that you arise as the true bound of Gilead and bring healing. Revive us, God, and let your true fire begin to pet the house. Rekabat, and the love of the most santa, Rekabala, and the love of the Rekabala, and the love of the most santa, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In the same spirit, we are going to be praying prayer point number two, which is the church that needs to understand prosperity from a biblical or a godly perspective, according to the book of John, of Third John, chapter two. Every there has been a a, a season and a time where the gospel of Jesus Christ was not about the transformation of the heart and for God to rule through the life of a converted child of God. It was more about what we are going to find, what, what can we get from the Father. And in the process, whether knowingly or unknowingly, we have made God a sense of a Father Christmas Somebody we can come to and just open our hands to give, 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 give to us as if that's the essence of the prosperity. Yes, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement mm -hmm. for our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we are healed. He was made poor that we may be rich 
it is his desire that we prosper in all things, even as our soul prospers. But there has been a miss, you know, a, a misunderstanding of the, of, the, of the prosperity from the biblical point of view. The reason why God would want us to prosper in all areas, it is because our prosperity is supposed to be a channel of the gospel into the ends of the earth. But we as the people of God, as the church, we have made it as a, as a vehicle for personal gain, for personal hoarding, and we have missed the mark. And tonight I pray that will bring repentance before God to say, Lord, bless us that we may be a blessing first to you and then to others. And that God will bring prosperity, not for only for our personal comfort, but that we may be a blessing also to others. It may not be financial blessing. It may even be the physical blessing, our very own lives. How is it that God has prospered our physical bodies, our minds, our spirit, our soul, our emotions, so, so much so that even though we have such blessings, we are unable to reach out to others. Brother David raised an issue of, of such, you know, crucial importance by saying, how many people are we reaching out to to say Jesus is Lord? It is because the gospel has been turned into a personal prosperity. We are going to pray and ask God to bring understanding of the prosperity according to the biblical and the godly perspective. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, baby, we bow before you, O oh Holy God. We acknowledge, Father, fully that, Lord God, you are pleased, O oh Father, in the prosperity of the saints. And, Lord God, your word declares, Father, that, Lord, just cast the, the blessing of the Lord to us as the children maketh us rich and adds no sorrow to it. It is your will, O oh Heavenly Father, that we prosper, Lord Jesus, that we are praying, O oh God, of this evening. We are bringing repentance, Lord God, for misunderstanding, Lord God, the purpose for, 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 for prosperity, for misunderstanding the godly perspective of Lord, why you are God, bringing us father. substance, Lord, of why you are bringing us items, of why you are bringing us Lord God, Lord, tools for life and living. Lord God, we pray that Father, even in the things that you bless us with, we will add godliness. Father, because it is your will, Father, that through the things that have blessed us with, that we let nothing pertaining to life and godliness. We are praying to our God, that Lord God, where we have acted wickedly, where, Father God, we have made all the blessings you've blessed us with to be of a personal gain, Father. Lord God, the voice of the kingdom mandate, you have mercy upon us. We pray, have mercy upon us. We ask you, Father, bring understanding. We pray, Father, for peace. We pray, Father, for hearts that are alive with the perfect will of God. Concerning the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Lord God, Father, we pray, Jehovah, that even as you are opening the portal of grace, God, even in this season, as we are pressing into you, Father, Lord Jesus, that, Father, you will begin, Lord God, to remember Remember us and cause us, Father God, to be completely aligned with your purposes. Lord God, starting in Jerusalem where we are, Lord God, in Judea, in Samaria, and the end of the earth in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that your prosperity will benefit, Father God, your children where we are. Will benefit, Father God, the cities where we are. Your pros 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 prosperity will benefit, Father God, the provinces where we are. But your prosperity of God in the church will benefit the nations where we are. But Father, your prosperity, Father, will benefit the continent where we are. For the, the cause of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Let there be no lack of God. Father, but even with the missionaries, when you prospered us this month in the name of Jesus, we are praying, Father God, Lord God, that you remember us a message and grace that, Father God, you redirect us and cause our past, Father, to align with your will. Rebado, lebariyanda, lebosia, rakata, lebate, rebesia, lebate, 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 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we pray like David, Father, that Father, God, when you prosper us, Father, our heart will not forget you, oh God. We will not be so prosperous, Father, that we forget your will, Lord God, even for the very prosperity, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Jehovah God, that our heart, oh Father, will be sealed with your heart beat, oh Rasha, I pray for the man of God, the prosperity that you release upon us will go against the time of the world, oh God. But it shall not be about any other thing except the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing godly understanding of prosperity to the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Lastly, we're going to be praying and probably tie the two. Prayer, num- prayer point number three, which is we are praying for the healing and renewal of the biblical institution of marriage and family in the church first. Reconciliation and healing of marriages between husband and wife and the alignment to the scriptural roles and provisions for families. We're going to be tying this prayer point together with prayer point number number, number five. This is prayer point number three and prayer point number five. Prayer point number five says, we pray for the children of God that the grace of God will be poured forth to his children in times of failure, disappointment, defeat, inadequacy that will receive the grace to believe the word of God and increase in faith in the midst of challenges we find ourselves in. Our, the basis of our scripture is in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, from verses 22. And then we're going to be moving also to touch base with Ephesians, chapter 6. We are looking at the godly order of a family according to God. It has to start with us as his children because the Bible says even the angels, when they seek for wisdom, God points them to the church. How much more us as the church being the wisdom even to the world. So our prayer point based on the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 where the Bible says in paraphrase, wives submit unto your own husbands and husbands love your wives even as Christ has loved the church and laid himself for her. That there will be this order in the homes. Not only that, we also pray that according to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, children will honor the parents because this is the pattern that God wants to display on the face of the earth using the marriages in the church. We can be so sure that the enemy is so much against this institution. I even like the fact that the prayer points are very clear. Healing of marriages between a husband and wife because there is such a clamor, there is such a confusion in the world. When the marriages in the church are not healed, the enemy would seek to replace the true essence of what marriages are with his own counterfeit, where a man and a man are made to marry, and this is made a law. Where a woman and a woman are made to marry, and this is made a law, and the enemy mocks the body of Jesus Christ. But we're going to base our, our prayers, our prayer point on the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, to say, Lord, restore again the humility and the, 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 the submission that is required of wives to their husbands, that healing may be brought into the families. And the love that only you can bring to the husbands to love their wives and even lay their lives for them. Not only that, but the order of the children understanding that their blessing flows from their parents according to the book of Exodus in the Ten Commandments. Because when the children honor their parents, then they shall be blessed. But the parents have got to be in a good position for them to be, to be able to bless even the next generation. So shall we bring you know, before God, the, 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 the marriages in the church, 
that God will first heal them and make them a visible evidence of what a true oneness is, even as the marriage is likened between Jesus Christ and the whole body of Christ on earth. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Daddy, we come before you, O Holy God. We humble ourselves, Father, before you, for we are so aware, Lord God, that we have moved away from your presence. We've moved away from your direction. We've shifted, Father, from your, from your principle. Lord God, we've moved away, Father, from the guidance of your word. For your word declares, Father God, that your truth, Father, make even the, the simple wise, Father. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for every wounding that has taken place, oh God, in the marriages and in the families, Father God of your own, Jesus, we ask you, Father, that you will bring healing to the marriages, Father God, especially of the beloved, the healing in the marriages, Father God, of your own children, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray to our God that you will restore humility in the heart of women, and that Father you will restore pure love in the heart of men of God. Where there is animosity, where there has been wounding, Father, either by words, by deeds, by conduct, by character, by nature, by attitude, by judgment, oh God, by failure to do the perfect roles according to how you think men. Marriages, Father, we are praying in the name of Jesus, Lord. God have mercy upon the marriages of your children. Mercy, oh God, upon the marital institution, Lord God of the redeemed. Jesus, Heavenly Father God, I say that where there has been a peace, Lord God, you bring healing, bring a new breath upon your children. Yes, of Jesus. Father, we pray that you reverse the curse, Lord God, of broken marriages in the body of Jesus Christ in Jesus' wonderful name. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will restore, oh God, because of the the marital bonds the God of the saints across the globe in the name of Jesus. And for the death of God, that are going to release a generational, generational blessing God, from one country to another, from one nation to another, in all people groups of God, in all races, Father, let the institution of marriage of God be upheld, oh Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. There have been issues, oh God, where the marriage bed has not been kept pure, Father, according to the book of Hebrews. Father, we pray, Father, and Father, your blood will begin to cleanse and purify the marriage bed. And make it pure and holy in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, where there's been infidelity, that God breaking off Father, this holy covenant, that Lord God will intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. There are rules of God that have been for rebellion in the lives of others. Pray, let the spirit be broken in the name of Jesus. Let that be light that is breathed by God Himself into the heart of the women. Of Jesus, strengthen Father, we pray. God has been the husband, breaking Father, heart of the man, God in the marriages of Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the healing grace, let the healing anointing begin to heal your children. Father God, as something that only you can bring to cause the heart to turn the rise towards you in Jesus' name. For your word declares, oh God, that what what God has brought together, let no man put us under in Jesus' name. For your word declares, oh God, that it is by the hardening of the heart of men that men come to a state of divorce. Lord, we pray, Lord, there's been a hardening of hearts. Rotten, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Remove the scourge, Father, of the Lord. Remove the scourge of broken marriages from the church in the mighty name of Jesus. Even tonight, Jehovah God, Father, from this altar, we are raising, Father God, as an example of incense, Lord God, before you, that says, Oh God, in South Africa, Oh God, in Africa, Jehovah, in North America, Father, in South America, Jehovah, in Australia, Father, in Australia, Heavenly Father, in Europe, Jehovah God, in the UK, Jehovah, let your hand of grace reach to all marriages, Father, in the body of Jesus, and bring healing in Jesus' name. When the two are together, a generational blessing will be released in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the healing grace, Father, that is flowing in marriages right now. Thank you, Lord, for reversing the cause of divorce. Thank you, Father, for revoking some decisions even tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Holy God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Uh, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Just in closing, because my brother David had already prayed for all other, you know, prayer points, I would like us to just, you know, close by agreeing that God having visited us as the church, God having, you know, shifted us towards his perfect will as the body of Christ, that whatever he has done, in this half of the month, as we are about to cross over to the to the next six months of 2021, we'll cross over as a body of Christ, as a church that's triumphant in all areas, as a church that has been brought into complete alignment by God. Just agreeing that when we enter into the second half of 2021, we will enter in as a triumphant church where the broken, where the lame where the blind, where the wounded can find complete healing, where revival is going to be birth forth across the globe. Shall we just agree? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just want to thank you. Jesus Christ. And bless your name, Jehovah. You, that Father, right, oh before the close of the six months in 2021, your oh, Shate, as we cross Jesus, over the to the second God, half of 2021, Master, Lord God, Lord God you have brought unto us to because of your mercy and grace, healing. You've brought unto us because of your mercy and grace, Father, restoration, because of your, of your grace and mercy, Father, you've remembered us, Lord God, in love, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for a triumphant crossover to the second oh month of 2021. Oh God. God, the church is no longer a sketch, Father, in the nations, but a church, Lord God, is a triumphant God, evidence of the glory of the living God on the face of the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, doing this, Lord God, in the priests, oh God, in the church, in the pastors, in the church, Lord God, in the prophets, in the church, in the teachers, oh God, in the church, Lord God, Father, in the, in the members, Lord God of the church, Heavenly Father God, in the families of the church, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, for complete restoration, oh God. We're entering in, Father, by your spirit into the second half, Father God, of the following six months, Father, not by power, not by might, but by your spirit in 